everyone. Uh, today, uh, it's a pleasure to introduce uh, Professor Artur Gucci from uh, ESPCI uh, in Paris. And his uh, research activities focus on control of waves in complex media, light interactions, and quantum optics. He developed on his PhD a framework to characterize collective excitations of uh, non Hermitian Hamiltonians with applications for random lasers, photonic classes, uh, core atoms. In 2012, he joined the group of Doug Stone in Yale, and he there uh, actually uh, developed a formalism to describe open channels to scatter medium uh, using random matrix theory. And in 2014, he started a faculty position in Institute Lojava, uh, and he, uh, where he proposed original models to harness the runtime synchronization information that gaps or the position in random, or, uh, random media or correlated random media. And today, uh, he spoke with one molding the flow of waves in complex media, imaging, tripping, and shaping uh, for resource. Thank you, Hassan, for the introduction. So it's a pleasure to be here with you to talk about um, my work uh, at Longman Institute in, in Paris. So um, from what I understood, uh, the background uh, in the audience is rather diverse, broad. So uh, instead of uh, giving a specialized talk on a specific topic, I decided to give you an overview of the different challenges that we are facing in the field of uh, waves in complex systems. This is why we have this, uh, uh, these keywords in the title, imaging, trapping, and shaping. You will understand why in a, in a minute. OK, so maybe the simplest way to introduce wave in complex systems is to consider the propagation of light. Uh, in nature, right? So, for example, if you consider the interaction of light <coughs> with a piece of ice or snow, you will see a very different uh, behavior. Ice is transparent and snow is not. The snow is opaque. And the reason is that <coughs> uh, uh, in ice, uh, uh, light propagates uh, ballistically because it, sees, uh, it, it, it experiences a homogeneous medium. Whereas in snow, you have snowflakes that will scatter light in many directions and, and the snow will be open. Of course, you have the same behavior when you look at the sky, look at the clouds, or uh, in this picture, when you look at the fog, uh, in the background, you cannot see through the fog because of multiple scattering. Now, when you change the wavelengths, things become different. The, 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 the ratio between the wavelengths and the scattering intentionalities is not the same, and the behavior of the wave uh, will be different. So for example, if I increase the wavelengths and I go to the radio waves, uh, the fog won't be a problem anymore. But the trees now are a problem. Okay, they will start to scatter uh, uh, the, the radio waves in, in, in all directions. So in, in this talk, I will mainly focus on the propagation of electromagnetic waves in complex systems. But all what I will say, in a sense, apply to all types of waves. So for example, here in this picture, you could also consider the propagation of seismic waves. And in particular, if you look at shear waves that propagate at the surface uh, uh, of the crust, of the first crust, these shear waves truly interact with the trees, because the trees become resonators for these waves. So these shear waves that are very dangerous for a for, for, for city or for, for home uh, can be converted into bulk waves and, uh, uh, because of the resonance of the trees. Okay. So this is a, an example of a strong interaction between a wave and a, and a scattering obstacle. And it shows you that resonances are important to, to alter the behavior of wave. But this is not the only way to change uh, the behavior of wave. You can also play with the position of the different scattering elements. You can place them in a special way so that you will use specific interferences between these waves. And for example, if you look at the feathers, the blue feathers here of, of, of this bird, uh, which is a kingfisher, uh, the, the origin of the blue color is not the pigment. Okay? It's not, this, this color doesn't come from absorption of the feathers. It's, it really comes from the peculiar network uh, that we have in the keratin structure of these feathers. Uh, and so it's 
at the, at the end of the day, it's related to the structure factor associated to the structure, and I will come back to that uh, in a moment. All right, so all these are the examples that you can find in nature, but of course, you can also consider synthetic systems, and, and if you build a system, you can explore all the physics of waves between completely dissolved system and completely ordered ones. So for example, here you have a mode, an eigenstate of, of a, a complicated structure that we call a hyper-uniform system, and we, I will come back to, to that uh, in, in this talk. And on the right, you have uh, photonic crystals that have band gaps, so lights cannot propagate through it because of interferences. So from, from these different examples, you can identify mainly three types of topics that I would like to address today. So the first one is a study of natural systems <coughs> that we usually characterize with some types of correlation. I will say more in this talk. And from this correlation, we can learn something and do some imaging, for example, or study the propagation of information in this correlation. The second topic is the modification of the material itself. You can try to, to engineer your, your system to, to, to get a new behavior for the waves that propagate here. So for example, as I said, you can add some resonators, you can modify the structure, add some correlation in the disorder, you can uh, eventually build some metamaterial with that, and a uh, topic which is uh, uh, emerging is uh, the topic of time varying media, so we change the scattering property in time to change the behavior of wave. I will not treat this topic uh, today. And the third topic I would like to, to discuss with you is a case is, 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 is a situation where you don't shape the matter directly, but you shape the wave. So you change, you, you take advantage of the degrees of freedom that you have in wave to, to, to modify the behavior. So this is a the field of waveform shaping, in particular, or uh, more generally, you can also shape the wave not only spatially but temporally, uh, using, in particular, the nonlinear response of your material. Or you can also try to explore more exotic waves like quantum waves. And I will say more in my talk about this. Okay, so let's start with the first topic: the problem of uh, imaging. Let's call it like this: imaging in complex systems. So the, the situation that we are <coughs> considering is the following. We have an object, and we would like to get an image of this object. But we are not on the right side. We are not here. We are behind a dissolved sample. And this sample is strongly scattered. So to understand the, 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 pro the scattering properties, the key properties that you have to understand, it is a simple quantity, but it is really important. This is what we call the mean free pass. So the mean free pass is a typical distance between two scattering units. So it's a, it's a, it's a concept that uh, everybody has studied at some point in his life, and it depends on, uh, at a basic level, it depends on the density of scatterers that you have. If you increase the density, you reduce this typical distance, and if you increase also the scattering cross-section of your particle, you will, you will also, uh, of course, uh, reduce this mean free pass. And the situation uh, that we are interested in is a, is, is a complicated one. It's a case where your object is, is far deeper than the mean free pass. Right? So the, the, the sample thickness here, here is much larger than the mean free pass. So when, when you are in this situation, you can try to get an image and you will not get it, essentially because you have this multiple scattering effect. Right? So what you will get on your CCD carrier is what we call the factor, which is apparently unrelated to the object that you try to see. Okay? So the question we, are, we ask is, well, how can I extract information in this speckle pattern about this object? Can I do this? Can, 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 can I do it? What, what can I do? So you have to know, to keep in mind, that all actual imaging techniques for all type of waves work when, you're see, when the image that you try to see is, is, is within a distance of one mean free pass. Beyond that, there is no existing techniques at all. Okay, so this is really the hard case, if you want. And if you, if you are able to, do, to, to get such an image, it will be great and great fun. So let, let me show you one example uh, uh, that we try to consider to, to, to understand what happens in this type of situation. So we, we consider a strongly opaque material. So the mean free pass is of the order of 10 micron, and the, the thickness is 50 micron. So 
So that means that you cannot see through. So this is what you see here. You cannot see uh, what, what, what is going on behind. We shine this uh, system with a laser. We collect the reflected speckle, okay? And uh, on the other side, you have a, a, a speckle in transmission. And apparently, these two speckle patterns are completely uncorrelated because of multiple scattering, okay? And we ask, well, let, let's try to, 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 to look at it closely. Is there, a, is there a correlation between these two pictures? So, one way to, to try to find some correlation between this and that is to consider the cross correlation. You cross correlate your, your, your image, and, well, you don't get anything. Right. It looks random, it looks a little type of a speckle pattern, so you are, you are not really happy with that. It means that apparently there is no correlation. But if you wait long enough, and in this case the system was, was moving, so you get some self-averaging because of the displacement of the particles, so this pattern changes and you keep averaging over time, and suddenly what happens is that you see something, right? So, so you see that these two pictures indeed are correlated, which corresponds to this blue area here, and if I, if I, if I take a cut of this, uh, of this, of this uh, correlation, I get something which is negative, right? It's blue, so it means it's negative. So the fact that you get some correlation is a good news. It means that you can maybe do something with that. And what the fact that it is negative it means that if you if you pick one bright speckle on one side, it means that you have more chance to find a dark speckle in front of it on the other side than a, a bright speckle, right? That's the meaning of a negative correlation. And what was surprising to us is that, in fact, this correlation does not depend on the disorder strengths. So you can, you can reduce, you change the mean free pass, the correlation is the same. It just depends on the depth at which you are looking at, so on the, here on the, on the sample signals. Both the amplitude and the, the, the width of this correlation depends only on this, uh, on, this, on this parameter, which is good and not good, as you will see. So, so, so first of all, the amplitude is small, right? This is the ratio of the wavelength between the wavelengths and the thickness. So this can be really small. So it's a, it's eventually an issue, but it is not zero. You can measure it. So maybe we can take advantage of this to get an image of an object which is on the side that you have no access to. Right? So we 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 push this idea and we try to to yeah for. Yeah, by the way, I forgot to mention it. So this is not this correlation is not a mystery. You can you can prove that there is indeed a correlation theoretically, and this is my job, I'm a theoretical physicist. So my job was to to find to demonstrate this, right? So I don't show you any, any theory, but we have a perfect theory that, that, that explains the existence of this correlation and that explains all the scaling of this of this function. But is, is it negative for all wavelengths? Yes. yes. Yes, yes. So, so when, so here it's a local correlation. But if you if you think in terms of total intensity, since you have energy conservation somehow, the total intensity should be anti anti correlated with the, uh, the the transmission and reflection have to be anti correlated, right? So that's that's a qualitative argument that tells you why it should be negative. All right. So so can can we get an image of it? So it's essentially the same setup, uh, but now we have an object on the transmission side. Okay, so this object is fluorescent. You have uh, illumination on one side, so that means that on, on, on the side of the, the, the objects, you have a speckle pattern that illuminates your object, right? So if you try to, to to quantify the amount of fluorescent light that you get out of this object. It will be the product of your object contrast and this, the, this speckle intensity that you have in transmission, right? If I get, if I have a bright spot, I will have more fluorescence. So this is what it means, okay? And the, 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 the game is that I have, no, I have no access to this side, okay? So what I can measure is, is the, the, the reflected speckle, okay? And I can also measure the total amount of fluorescence produced by this object. So now the idea was Let's try to correlate each point in this picture with this number, right? This is a bucket detector, so it gives you one number, which is the amount, the total amount of fluorescence that comes from this object. So, so it's, it's, in a way, it's related to what we call cost imaging, but it's um, slightly more complicated. Yes, a quick question. Yes. You have the lenses over there. So are they focused to the surface of your device? 
Yes, yes, but we, we change it after, but yes, it is a good The other question is, do you really need them? Just remove them, still have the way for vacation. Yeah, you, you do need them. So, so I, I would comment on that, but the, if, if, you, if you look at this, so the key quantity will be this correlation function, and when you look at another distance, essentially you have to replace L by the distance at which you are looking at. So, so, so if, if, I, if I'm not in focus, I will increase the width of this correlation function, and it, it is not a good uh, thing. Okay. So, so let's go back to, to this correlation function. I'm correlating each pixel in my reflection spectrum, right, with this number. Right? So just look at the solution you get mathematically. From a mathematical point of view, you just inject, inject this expression into that. And what you see is that you immediately get the correlation function between the reflected and transmitted spectrum I was talking about previously. Right? So this, in fact, is the correlation function I was, I was mentioning. And this integral is just the convolution of your object with this correlation function. Okay? So what does it mean? It means that, in fact, if you do this operation, what you should get, in principle, if you believe in math, is that you should get your image, but which is, with a, which is convoluted by, by some correlation function that has a certain width. Okay? So this is our experimental result. You indeed get from this pickle an image, which is a, 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 a resolution target uh, here in this example. So it works, okay? This is the good news. And it works in a regime which is very difficult to tackle, right? In the regime where the, the, the system is going to pick. So it's, it's, it's already something, but the bad news is that the resolution you get is, in fact, the width of your correlation function, and, and this can be large, right? It's, 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 it's far from the wavelength resolution that we hope to get uh, to get a good resolution image, right? But this is an example of an, an imaging technique that goes that, that goes far beyond what we can do uh, uh, with 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 All right. So so before moving to another topic, I just wanted to 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 show you another point of view on, on the same problem. So when you get an image of something, you, you require some information about this object. So you can try to think in terms of information instead of imaging, right? And you can ask yourself, well, uh, if, if, I, if I'm detecting only uh, a field at some position, what is the information that I get from uh, a field which is somewhere else, right? So if, 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 I want, if I'm want, if i here, I want to know what, what is the information that I have in the back of the room. <coughs> but what is the amount of information in terms of bits of information, right? So you can, you can consider the following problem. You have some, some if you want some antennas or the pixels of your camera, and all this you, you put it in a, in, a, in a vector that you call x, okay? And you have n detectors, and you ask, well, what, what is the information that I get uh, uh, about this, this uh, undetected image or undetected spectrum on the other side? So, uh, rigorously speaking, what we have to look at is what we call the mutual information between x that you measure and y that you do not measure. And this is well defined in information theory. In particular, it involves what we call the joint probability between x and y. Right? So it makes sense. If you know the joint probability, somehow you will be able to get the only information. Right? So we wanted to evaluate this guy, which is more involved than the previous correlation function because the density function involves all moments. Right? But we were able to, to do that. And, and the result is kind of surprising. So, so we found that. The, 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 the maximum information that you can get about this unknown y by measuring x takes this following form. So it scales with n. n is the number of detectors or the number of bits of information that you have in your image. So it makes sense that somehow it <coughs> scales n. We also, we also found that it scales with the correlation function, with the square of the correlation function I was mentioning before. So if you have no correlation between reflection and transmission, you have no information. It also makes sense. And you also have an enhancement factor, which is a ratio between the, the mean free pass and the windows. You see again here that the mean free pass plays a key role. So we were able to, to find this, 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 this scaling. And also, you can change the distance between your detector. And if you are a bit, uh, I mean, I was surprised by this result, because if you, if you think, uh, if you take some antennas and you say, OK, I'm going to start to collect some information at a certain wavelength, you would think that you have to place your detector at a distance which is a wavelength to get all information. 
And in fact, it's not true, right? The, the, the best distance that gives you the maximum information is not lambda. It's lambda enhanced by a certain, uh, a certain fraction that involves now the, the, the ratio between the, your, your sum of sickness and the mean free pass. So it's not something I, I, I could explain it to you in more details, but it takes some time. And, and so I just wanted to, to, to show you that you, you can really quantify the amount of information for an arbitrary uh, complex system, and you can get some. Uh, what kind of statistics do we assume for the randomness in the media? So it is non version. It is non version. This is the key. And, and, and actually, yeah, if, if you just had Gaussian statistics, you would have no correlation. This, this guy is by nature non version. So, so if I go back to the correlation, yeah, this, this correlation function is, is non version. It's, that's why it is small, but it's also complicated. And, and but even in the non version case, we could compute the full distribution function, which is also not trivial, right? Because you cannot break the, the distribution into the, the first one. Okay, all right. So now I will change the topic and move to the second uh, part of, of this talk. I would like to, to show you what happens now when, when we, we start to change the material it, uh, itself. Uh, so there are many types of dissolved system uh, that you can consider, and uh, what I've shown you here is a, is a picture that I, I took from a paper which is still on archive, and that, that shows you the different types of disorder uh, that are uh, considered uh, nowadays. So maybe the most uh, common example is the case where you have a, a hard sphere potential between your particles because they cannot interpenetrate. Interpenetrates. So, so this is what you have in this SCN image, for example, right? So the particles have short range uh, correlation. Of course, you can have uh, some polycrystals, uh, or you can take a crystal and move a little bit in for the bizarre position, which is uh, uh, what was considered uh, in the first studies of, of photonic crystals, for example, or you can have more exotic structure with, 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 with fractal type disorder. Here, I just want to show you an example with what we call hyper-uniform disorder. So this is, the, it's, it, it's, it's the, the, yeah, the fourth column here. And the simplest way to define such type of system is, is to look at the structure factor, which is on the second line. Uh, so you see that the structure factor is zero, exactly zero, near uh, at low Q, Q vector, right? And if you compare it with what you are used to, maybe with, uh, with uh, a short range correlation, it looks kind of similar uh, to what we have with short range correlation. But the fact that it is really zero at low Q means that you have low correlation at large distance, right? Low Q means large distance. So you have strong correlation at large distance. And, and these uh, systems are, are interesting for photonic application. I will, I will show you some examples in the next slide. So just here to show you how we generate this thing, you can start with a random configuration of, of particles. And uh, one way to, to get the, the, the a hyper uniform structure is to optimize the structure factor. So the, you have here, the, I put the definition of the structure factor to show you that it explicitly depends on the position of the particles. So what we do is that we just change the position of the particle to minimize the structure factor near zero of origin. Okay? So you can use the method you like, for example, uh, uh, gradient descent method, right? And, and, and at the end of the day, you get such type of structure factor, and in real space, you see that indeed uh, your particles have uh, both short and long range correlation. So it's a disordered structure, but with, with, some, with some strong constraint. And this type of structure is it interesting for photonic application. Why? Well, the first reason is that it allows you to, to, to tune the mean free pass. I told you that the mean free pass is a key quantity. Right? So, so why? Well, for example, the transparency that you get from the medium is simply the, the ratio between the mean free pass and the sample segments. Right? So if you are able to tune the mean free pass, you can make your system transparent. Okay? And how does the mean free pass depend on the structure? Uh, it depends uh, in, in, on the structure in two ways. Uh, you have first the form factor, right? That it depends on the, essentially the scattered cross section of your particles, the resonance, etc. And you also have a collective part, which is a structural factor. Okay? 
So, so this is well known somehow. And so it means that if you are able to get this future factor down to zero, it means that your mean free pass will, will be large, right? And this is precisely what we are doing with hyper-reinforced structures, right? We are, we are minimizing the structure factor in a certain Q range, OK? So in terms of transports, uh, so this is a result obtained by my, some of my colleagues some time ago. So if you compare the case of a non-correlated system with an hyper-uniform system, here, by just changing the position of the particle, you don't change the density, right? You just move the particle to go from a disordered uh, configuration to a hyper uniform zone one. So you go from red to blue. In red, you see that the, 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 this is the radiation pattern of your system. So in the red case, most of the light goes backward, right? It's reflected uh, in the back direction. It means that you have no transmission. The so system is okay. This is your piece of paper, okay? And now I'm just changing the, the, the position of the particle in my piece of paper, and the piece of paper becomes completely transparent, okay? Uh, this is a blue case, right? Now the light goes straight in the, in, in, in the forward direction. So it means that I have transformed my, my, my interior into a, an effective uh, uh, transport material by, by, by playing with interference. Which is How much is the wavelength compared to the in the particle distance then? Yeah, so, so you could think that you should, you should be in a regime of homogenization, but it is not the case because uh, here and here, the density is the same. So that means that the mean distance is the same. Okay? And here you see that you are not homogenized. So it is not enough to compare the wavelengths to the mean distance. Right? Because if the wavelength is larger than the mean distance between particles, you are safe on the homogenized region. But here we are not. Okay? So now, take this transparent material. That means that the wave will penetrate through the material. Okay? So now you can say, OK, let's try to add some absorption in the particle. Since the wave penetrates deep into the material, if I place some absorption in the particle, I will be strongly absorbed. Right? So this is what you have here. You compare the, the total absorbed power uh, in such type of structure for, for either uh, uh, disordered completely and correlated case and uh, hyper uniform case. And on the x axis, here you have the amount of absorption that you place in each particle. So the fact that it increased, it's, it's absolutely normal, right? You have increased the amount of uh, uh, the absorbing power of each particle, uh, the total absorbing power increases. But you see that with the hyper uniform system, we get more absorbed power, and the reason is simple. It's just because the wave penetrates deeper. Right? But this is kind of cool, right? Because now you have a kind of background material uh, with 100% uh, uh, absorption. All right. So hyper uniform systems are, are nice because they, are, they, are, they, are, they allow you to, to, to make some material transform, but not only. So uh, a, a result which is uh, known is that uh, when you add correlation into a disordered system, you can have a band gap that appears even if you have no translational invariance, even if, if uh, you cannot use your block theorem, right? You can still have a band gap, and the origin of the band gaps in this system is extremely controversial. So here is an example. So you, we start from uh, the case where you have, uh, this, so this is a density of state, sorry, as a function of the frequency for a specific system. I don't want to give you too many details. But so that corresponds to the gray dashed line. And progressively, we increase the correlation. So we go from gray to red. So you see that there is a frequency range where uh, a band gap or a pseudo gap appears, right? And so, so in this recent paper, what we proved theoretically and numerically is that we understood the origin of this one gap in terms of the microscopic scattering mechanisms that occur in, the, in, in such type of sample. And the explanation at the end of the day is pretty simple. In fact, you have a destructive interference between two types of scattering events. You can either scatter the, the light or the wave can scatter uh, independently from one scatter to, uh, scatter to another. And you have another type of pass where the light forms loop with a, with a neighboring scatterer, which is specially correlated with it, right? And if this distance is somewhat fixed, which is what you get in, the, in those hyper uniform system, you can be in a regime where you have a, a pike uh, phase shift between these two scattering events that gives you a destructive interference. And at the end of the day, you can prove that it, it creates a gap. 
So you can also have gap in this system. So now, once you have gap, you know that if you have gap, the light cannot penetrate. So it will completely change the wave behavior. Uh, and so here, what I show you is our examples of eigenstates in this complicated structure for different frequencies. So you can think of this picture as the generalization of the modes of the fabricable cavity, right? And now it's a dissolved sample which is open, so the modes are more complicated. Okay, and I change the frequency. So I start from the low frequency region, uh, where I told you that I have a, a, a transparent material, a stealth material, right? And if you look at the eigenstates of this system, you see that somehow the, the, the medium is, is, is behaves like a homogeneous medium. You can recognize a, a whispering gallery type of modes uh, in, in this disk here. So we are here in the transparent region. When you when you reach uh, when you increase the frequency, you lose this transparency effect, and the modes become more complicated. In fact, you are here back to the diffusive region. And now, when you reach this, this is the region where there is a gap, you can even find some localized modes, and you can even show that there is a phase transition between these two regions, that we call the Anderson localization transition, which is induced here by the frequency. We have all these pictures are in the same correlated phase, but, uh, but uh, we change the frequency. So now, if you remember what I told you about the case without correlation, no? without correlation, the gray curve here, we were in the diffusive phase, right? The, 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 the opaque phase. So that means that, and for all frequencies, so that means that by picking up the right wavelengths, you can tune, by playing with the correlation, you can tune your material from a diffusive phase or an opaque phase to a transparent, diffusive, or localized phase. Right? So, this is to show you that special correlation is, is not a small effect. It can completely change all the behavior of the waves, and we kind of understand this uh, pretty well now. Is that just true? Uh, so it's it's no, it's general to also. I mean, this to be is two D, but we did it for both scalar and vector waves. So the main effect in three D, well, there are different effects. But yeah, so the, the short answer is that it also works in three D. Is there a uh, system size that uh, starts to that fluctuation starts to you know uh, destroy your uh, correlations? Uh, basically, like marine one answer into the so to, to destroy the special correlation. So uh, you have fluctuations in the system, right? Uh, fluctuation of what of, of uh, I'm not sure. Okay, so so here it's. Uh, there, there is no fluctuation, I mean, the field is fluctuating because it's random. So we have statistical fluctuation. Is that what you are talking about? Or you are talking about like material realization, the fact that you have some imperfection and... No, no, well, but what I mean is, uh, so is there any kind of, you know, it can be any fluctuation in the way that can destroy your correlations here. So correlation that results to the fluctuation can destroy your correlation. Yeah, yeah, so the correlation that results to into the localized region, for example? Uh, yeah, I don't think I have a maybe just ask later. Yes, so, sorry. Um, what, what is true is that uh, in 2D you don't have a real phase transition. I don't know if it's what you are referring to. You have a crossover and, and uh, the system size is important to, because it's, so, so that's clear that in 2D you have, a, you have an important role of the, of, the, of the space dimension. That's clear. I don't know if it's a good answer. Okay, so. Now I would like to briefly mention the, the, the last topic, which is a case where you don't touch the material because you see that it becomes complicated. So let's now try to change the wave itself. Uh, so I will first start with the, the case where we change the wave specially. Okay? So let me show you this picture that uh, helps you to that can help you to, to grasp the idea. So when you send a plane wave, so, so here we have a special modulator, and if you don't do anything on your SNN, uh, you will send a plane wave, right? So, so. And when you send this plane wave for this example, so here I don't know if you see, but there are some black dots that correspond to a design slab. Okay? So, and we are in the region where the sample thickness is much larger than the mean frequency, so the wave is reflected. This is what you see, right? You, you see this become pattern that we talked about, and, and most of the, the wave is reflected. So we are in this, this, this region. And so now you can try to play with the degrees of freedom that you have in your, in your wave, right? So if, if, if I take a, a laser pointer, which is one millimeter square, 
But how many degrees of freedom do I have in this, in this small pointer like here? I have, uh, if I have to divide the area of this pointer by, by, uh, by the wavelength square, right? So the wavelength is one micron, uh, one millimeter divided by one micron square, I get uh, one million moles, right? One, one million degrees of freedom. Okay, so, so this is a huge number. If, if for, for particular waves, it's a huge number. So you have a lot of degrees of freedom that you can play with to, to change completely the behavior of the wave, right? So for example, here we, we change the wavefront so that we may use very specific interference in transmission. We decided, for example, here to get a focus. I don't know if you see, but the wave at the output of the result slab will converge to a specific target. So that means that you have completely converted your dissolved material into a lens with a, uh, with a focal lens that you can shoot as a map, right? This is you who decide where you want to focus. So you can do that. So that you have a lot of, of freedom. And we wanted to play with this idea to, to, to investigate other type of phenomena that you can get with wave. So the question we asked recently was the following. Can, can I change the wavefront of my wave to maximize the energy that I have in my, my complex system? Okay, I want more energy. So for example, let's say I have an SLM somewhere in the whole wall here, and I want to change the wave to get, to, to get more signal in the full room. How can I do that? And, and what is the maximum energy I can get in this room, right? So that's the type of question we are asking. So how, how do you define the energy in, in a simple way? This is essential, essentially the intensity of the field that propagates uh, through, through the system. So what is nice is that so we prove that we, you can express this volume integral so as the expectation value of a matrix that I will explain in, in a second in the input state that you are sending. So this is a bit tricky, but you have to, to think about it. So what is this matrix? This matrix, it, it, it is interesting because of two things. First, it is made only of what we call the transmission and reflection matrix. So when I send a wave, I can define the reflection matrix and the transmission matrix, right? It, it, it can do that for any type of linear problem. And so you see that this matrix that is only dependent on what is scattered out of the sample give you some information about what is going on inside, right? So you relate the volume to the surface, and on top of that, you need also to know the, 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 the frequency derivative of this matrix. So we, we were able to show that you can express the energy in this form, and it, it is useful because it immediately tells you that the largest energy you can get, by definition, will be the largest eigenvalue of this matrix. And on top of that, it tells you that the waveform that will give you this maximum energy is the eigenstates associated to this energy. Okay? So it gives you a recipe to find the solution. If you want. So let me show you now what happens when I send this specific waveform. I take the, 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 the waveform that, that maximizes the energy and let's see how different it is from, from, from what, I, what you see here. So here is the result. This is intensity due to this waveform inside the dissolved sample, okay? And I compare two cases. In black, you have the, the, the storm case. I said a plane wave, okay? And you see that the intensity inside the sample decays linearly. So this is a signature of diffusion process. So we can show it easily. When you have a diffusion process, uh, it has to decay linearly inside the sample. Now when I consider this, this state that maximizes energy, you see that instead of decaying, it increases first, uh, it reaches the middle of the sample and then it increases again. But what matters is that overall, if you integrate over the full system, you get much more energy, which is also true at any depth, right? So we were able to characterize this in details, and in particular, we found that the enhancement you get from the plane wave to this eigenstates is again uh, the ratio between the thickness of your material and the mid frequency. So you see that essentially, if you understand the mid frequency, you understand many things in this character. So this is, this is nice, okay? We, we were able to, to, to understand this, and when we stop, okay, let, let's go back to, for one second to this matrix. What you are doing, in fact, when you increase energy, you are increasing the dwell time of your wave inside your complex system. So the, the, span, the, the wave spends more time, okay? So we were thinking, okay, if you want to play with time, it's a good idea to, to, to play with resonance. 
right? We know that for the windows are, are going to increase the lifetime of the systems. So we ask ourselves, what, what happens if we place inside this very complex system, uh, not, which is not known, one resonator, right? We buried it deep inside this complex system. And let's look at the propagation of the states associated to the largest eigenvalue. It should be the states that optimize the dwell time inside this complex environment, right? So maybe it will focus on the resonator because inside the resonator you will have a strong light, a low, a low lifetime. And indeed, you see the propagation inside the system, it tends to converge to the high Q resonator even if you don't know where it is, right? So, so just from the reflection and the transmission, you can, you can find it, right? You can find where your resonator is and it will focus sharply on it. All right, so that was um, the, uh, um, some works related to, to, to the maximization of, of energy inside the, inside, the, the full, uh, inside the full system. But for many applications, what you want is not really to maximize the total energy, you want to maximize the energy in the target. Right? So for example, if I take my example, I, have, I control my wave on a screen here, and I want to focus on uh, like a certain volume inside this room to, to, to optimize your Wi-Fi signal. And you want to, to, to know how, how much Wi-Fi you will get uh, on this or that person, right? Well, by, by optimization. So since the answer is, is, is similar to what I just showed, right? But now instead of integrating over the full volume, you integrate over the volume of interest. Right? I want to optimize this uh, the energy inside a certain volume. Okay? So it's a work in collaboration with a group in particular of Wei Tsao and Tian, uh, where they made this nice design. It's a 2D photonic uh, uh, system in silicon, where you have some holes uh, to create uh, some photonic works. And the holes also are used to, to, to create some scattering inside the sample. So what we want in this system is to optimize uh, the energy in a certain volume, which is large, at a certain, certain depth Z. Okay? And uh, so it's not complicated to show that this energy can be again be expressed as the expectation value of a matrix in the state that you are sending. And the basis matrix, Z dagger Z, involves what we call the deposition matrix. So it's simply the linear operator that relates the input field to your target uh, volume. Okay? And now, since you have this simple uh, uh, relation, again, you can play the same role and, and look at the eigenvalue and eigenstates of this guy. Okay? So that's what we did in great detail. So what you have here is a complicated plot. So it's the eigenvalue distribution of this matrix, okay? so on the y-axis, as a function of the eigenvalue u, okay, for different depths. So I, I consider that I move progressively my volume and I want to know how, my, how the eigenvalue changes. Uh, change. So uh, here you have, for example, at a fixed depth in blue, you have the eigenvalue distribution. So and it's, this plot shows you that most of the eigenvalue are close to zero. So it means that the, most of the eigenstates will give you some energy which is much smaller than you would get with a standard plane wave. But you see that there are some which are large, right? Which are 10 times larger that you will get in the plane wave, which is a good, right? It means that you will increase the energy at this specific depth. And then we, we change the depth, and you see that this energy will increase with depth. So this is completely uh, unusual and unexpected. We have the energy that increases with depth, right? So, so deeper and deeper, you can deposit more and more energy. And on top of that, I don't show it here, but it will also increase if you have more disorder. We would think that means that if I increase the disorder, if I reduce the neutral pass, I will get less energy. It's completely the opposite. We get more energy. Okay? So uh, this is uh, quite surprising, and, and we can describe this very precisely. We right? can have analytic expression for the full distribution and for the maximum energy uh, explicitly. Right? So we can write this uh, in this paper. All right, so that was some example about spatial control of the wave. And in the last five minutes, uh, I would like to show you uh, uh, another way of modifying the waves and the, the properties of waves in complex system. So I change a bit the topic again. I would like to talk about uh, the propagation of quantum light. Okay, so, so I, I, I showed you that already with classical light, with classical wave, you get a lot of uh, interesting stuff, but you can do even more, right? You can Look at the propagation of quantum light. So, and, and, and the most uh, uh, intriguing 
quantum uh, uh, states are quantum states. Okay, so why not considering the, the combined effect of underlying lights and multiple scattering? What, what do you get? Okay, so it's a, it's a field which is uh, new. Okay, so there are no new results in this field. So before showing you some results in scattered media, let me show you uh, briefly how we generate uh, this uh, orthogonal pair of photons. This is a, a, a standard uh, way to do it. We consider a kaiju material, we pump it, and we use a process of spontaneous, spontaneous down conversion, where from a pump photon, we will create a pair of two photons, which we usually call the signal and hydro, which are, uh, have the frequency of pump photon. And by moment of conservation, this photon must be uh, of, uh, must, must go in the opposite direction, right? So we uh, have both energy and moment of conservation. So photon can we write the state in this form and here n is the number of channels uh, or directions that you are creating in this uh, in this linear process. So one way to characterize that this state is non trivial, is is it's more than you cannot describe it in, in classical terms. And in particular uh, to show that it is autonomous, you can look at the correlation of these pairs of photons both in the far field, so at the, at the surface of your nonion system, and in the far field. Okay? So in, in the near field you see that they are strongly correlated. So the photons are at the same position. Okay? This is this plot here. And they are also correlated in direction. So this plot tells you that they go in the opposite direction. So in, in, if photons are not not correlated, not an angle, the product of the, of, the, of the size of these two spots should be one half. Okay? But this is much, much less than one half. Uh, so somehow we can apparently violate the uncertainty principle uh, because of entanglement. So this is a size of the proof of the, that this state is, is entangled. So now let's see what happens when I had a complex system in front of me. <coughs> so I have my uh, uh, pairs of, uh, of entangled photons, I have the scattered medium, and uh, Behind it, I can do two things. Well, I can place a, oh, I can place a camera or my process I, I, I can use a single photon detector and move it around. Okay, to reconstruct an image. So if you do that with the classical lights, right? If I send a photo on the light, which is the one gram on the on the random system, I should get a spectrum. Right? So in this single photo counts, if if light is classical, I should get a spectrum. You don't get a spectrum. You get something which is almost uniform. In fact, you get a spectrum with a, with a very, very low contrast. And the fact that the contrast is very low is again the signature of entanglement. So where, 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 where can I find a speaker? Well, to, to recover a speaker, you have to look at coincidence. You have to, for example, uh, fix the position of one detector and look at the photons that arrive at the same time, but at a different position. So you fix one detector and you move your, your, your other detector around. And because of the scattering medium, the, the, the other photons can arrive a bit anywhere, right? So you will get a spectrum in this map that corresponds to a coincidence rate. Right? So the fact that you get a spectrum is also not trivial. You can prove that only intended states will give you a spectrum with the standard Rayleigh statistics. Okay? So this is also not trivial. So now we are kind of happy because we recover what we are used to in classical uh, physics with speckles. So we said, okay, let's try to play with, with, with this speckle. Can we recover all the mesoscopic effects that we are used to with classical speckles? Okay? And the first, maybe most well-known effect that you can get in the speckle, <coughs> in the classical speckle, is uh, what we call the color backscattering effect. So let me briefly present use this, this, this effect. So in this case, you, you, you have a classical source. Imagine you send a on a medium on the complex system uh, that is moving, and you detect the light which is reflected. Okay? And you scan the, 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 your, your, the position of your detector. So right uh, at theta equals zero, so in the direction of your emission, you will see that you get a bright spot. Okay? Something very bright with a very small size, uh, a normal size that involves the wavelengths and again the mean free light. Okay? So this is what we call the current by scattering effect. So clearly it is an interference effect that survives even if you have disorder. Okay? And why is it so? Well essentially because you have a constructed interference between two types of paths, right? The, the two fields that that, that that contributes to this intensity can either propagate 
uh, along the same path uh, in, the, uh, in the same order, or along the same path in the opposite order, right? And this this gives right to a constructive interference exactly when the angular when you have when you have no phase difference between these two uh, type of events. So right at the time of zero. We call this a current by scattering. So you can see it in many, many, many <coughs> with all types of ways, right? People playing with it with uh, with 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 better ways, with uh, all types of quantum uh, classical, right? It doesn't matter, it's a it's a wave effect. So you get it with all types of way. So here is an example that you get. Uh, that was taken from a spacecraft, okay, on the rings of Saturn, right? So the, 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 we take a picture of the ring of Saturn, so the sun is on your back, in your back, okay, and you look at the rings, and you will see that right in the direction of the sun, you will get a bright spot. And this bright spot is precisely this CBS, uh, and if you look at the size of, of this spot, it will tell you what is the wind pass inside the rings of Saturn, and you will learn something about the rings of Saturn, etc. Okay? So this is not the... What I want to talk about is just to tell you that the CBS is, is a well known thing. So let's now try, before considering the case of a total photon, let's, let's try to do the same experiment but with a single photon. Okay, now I, 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 this is the same, I just changed the photon source, I, I, I write one photon source. So I just said one photon one by one. So if photons are, were particles, I would not get any interference, right? But photons are, are, are waves. Right? So you will get an interference. And indeed, you recover exactly the same effect as you would get with classical waves. Right? You get exactly the elements uh, in the backward direction with the same width. Okay? So this is, if you want, the analog of the, uh, of the experiment, or the double slit experiment with single photons. Right? You know that you can recover the fringes one by one by requiring over time. So this is the same effect, but in a complex system. Okay? So this is a uh, so one photon called by scattering, and now what happens when you get when you launch two photons that are internal? So you, you have your, your source of alternative photons that I was talking about. You collect the, the photon in both directions, one detector is fixed, you measure the coincidence, and you change the position of the second detector. And so we know that there is a speckle, I, I was explaining this to you right before, and you see that here again you, you find a, a, a coronal detector. Okay, so which is which is surprising, and if, on top of that, the width is twice smaller. It's as if the wavelength was divided by a factor of two. Okay, so we, we studied this effect in great details, and theoretically, you can show that what what are the diagrammatic uh, terms that will be responsible for this effect. So a very simple and naive way to think about it is to use reciprocity and consider that the wave does not propagate from the source to the detector, but you just Flip it, you go from the detector to the source. And in this way, you see that there is a kind of path that goes from the detector to the medium, to the source, back to the medium, to the other detector. So, this is what you see here. Right? You enter here, you leave the system, and you go back uh, to the medium once more. So, you see that you get here two types of paths that uh, can also interfere constructively, but in between, you get this weird thing which is precisely due to the fact that you, get, you are playing with some other particles. Right, so you have a, a virtual back injection of photons inside the sample, and because of this, uh, the photon, with, the, the current, this effect is a square of this one, right? Because you have two interactions of the system, and uh, we can, can show that uh, numerically and theoretically. So you have here the result for one photon in blue and in red for two photons. So you square the signal and you get a width which is uh, half of the, the, the original. All right, so I hope uh, I was not too long. So let me briefly uh, 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 recap. So in the first part, I tried to uh, convince or show you that even with classical wave, plane wave, simple design system, without any correlation, there is still a lot we do not understand. So in particular, uh, a big word here is uh, the fact that we cannot get an image beyond one in three pass. And if you know how to do that, uh, I can guarantee you that it will be something uh, really important. So, so but we, we, at the moment, we still don't know if, it's even, if it is even possible. So even theoretically, if you ask me, what, what, if I, can I get an image beyond one in three pass with a good resolution, with a wavelength resolution, I don't know. Okay. So, uh, 
I also show you that you can play with the disorder to get some funny uh, properties, in particular for photonic application, you can be transporting or localization. And on top of that, uh, I also try to show you that you can play with complex slides, either the special degrees of freedom or even quantum light, to, to, to even get uh, more complicated uh, features. I thank you for the question.
Okay, another question, maybe we'll start with time for one more question. Yeah. Okay. I have one. Um, by using a special pattern, is it possible to get a vessel in from a plane wave? I guess so. Uh, I don't think about it, but uh, you, you, you um, yeah, I'm really in the right sports in the world. I said yes. Having a sketcher that is not sub-wavelength in the size. Mm -hmm. If it's sub-wavelength, it's possible, but uh, there's also a size constraint for uh, having this kind of transform. Sorry, the buffer is not sub-wavelength. Each point that you have here, yeah. there, uh, I don't know what's inside of them. Just, uh, first so it's not from the bottom again? Does it have to be sub -wavelength? No, it doesn't have to be sub -wavelength. It, no, no, it's clearly not. Uh, uh, well, it doesn't work because if it is too large, you know what? Move more. You know, you know, you know, like, uh, you know, 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 you yeah, the, I did not study this pro, pro, uh, carefully. I guess there is a transition somewhere. Okay, thank you. Uh, and let's thank the speaker.